Okay, so one of the questions we get during regional courses uh, is when we restore, on our, our regional courses, we restore the class twos that I showed you a picture of that are on this model. So one of the questions I frequently get is how do you prep that Clark class two, uh, minimally invasive prep? So when I came through dental school, we were prepping class twos with a, uh, a 557 or a 56 burr. So that is not the way to prep a minimally invasive class two. So we're gonna go through the steps of how to prep this class two, and, um, and then we can go through the steps on how to restore it as well. But first video, we're gonna go through just the preparation, how to do a minimally invasive prep, a minimally invasive class two Clark prep. Okay, so the first step before we start prepping the tooth, we're gonna pre-wedge. Pre-wedging is really important. It gives you a layer of sort of protection from hitting the adjacent tooth. And it's gonna give you, start to give you a little bit of separation between the teeth. So on the BioClear system, we've got different sizes of wedges. And first what we're gonna do, we're gonna try in a large size. And we're gonna prep the mesial of that first molar right there. So what I like to do, this is place it, I'm gonna come from the paddle. You can place from the, from the uh, buckle if you need to, but in this case, we're gonna go from the paddle. And you see what happened is that dropped in so easy. That means that that one's a little bit too small. Let's try to go up a little bit bigger. I like when the wedge meets some resistance. And these wedges from BioClear, basically they're very anatomic. They're awesome because they don't back out and you insert them like you're doing a suture needle. So instead of coming straight across, you kind of come up a little bit like that. And then you just push, 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 boom. And then it drops in. When you get a little bit of that resistance, that's when you got the right size. Okay, so first uh, burr I'm gonna use is a Fisherotomy burr. So um, that is the, my. So far, my favorite Fisherotomy burr is the one from SS White, and I'll put a picture in there of that burr. So um, it's just gonna give you a minimal prep, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep a layer of enamel between us and the adjacent tooth, and we're gonna go down looking for the class two caries, um, whether you suspect it. It helps if you can suspect it, if it's to the buccal, to the palatal, or is it right underneath the contact generally, it's right under the contact. Okay, so what we did with this very small minimal prep, it was almost all fisherotomy burr. And then you saw I did a little bit of flaring with the, with the burr from Comet that is for flaring the prep out. And the reason why we're flaring it a little bit instead of keeping it verticalized is we wanna get away from anything that looks like a GV Black style preparation. You have to remember that GV Black developed those preparation styles for amalgam or for gold. And those preps were designed in the 1850s, way before composite resin ever existed. So they're not appropriate for composite. And that's how we got in trouble in the early phases of doing composite dentistry was trying to work with composite into standardized GV Black preps. And there's a whole host of reasons for that that are a little bit too long to go into the, for this video but basically you're trying to design a prep that everything is in compression as much as possible without getting vertical parallel walls, no sharp line angles, everything rounded and smooth as, so you're gonna flow a flowable substance into there without getting bubbles or voids. And that's much easier on a rounded prep style. The, the BioClear design prep is designed to minimize dentin exposure and maximize enamel engagement. So it has nothing to do with retention, okay? You do not need retention on any of these preps. Okay, so we were talking about burr selection for doing this minimally invasive class two preparation. So the Fisher Army burr from SS White, I'll include a picture of that. That is my go-to burr that I start with. Once I complete that minimal preparation that you saw, then from that point on, I'm done with that burr. Every burr that I use after that Fisherotomy burr is right here in the BioClear uh, prep kit, which I'll put a picture of that. So um, 
as it often happens, it looks like a minimally invasive and it grows larger and it becomes something bigger. The bird that I use for Carrie's excavation 90% of the time is the round-ended coarse diamond. And that's from the Comet BioClear kit. Um, when I flare the larger preps, I'm typically using uh, a flame-shaped uh, coarse diamond. That's my bird probably I go to al almost on every case, flaring the preparation out or rounding corners or beveling. Uh, that's my go-to diamond. Um, the HQ finisher is a very nice burr to use for palatal fossa and shaping and stuff like that. I'll either use that or I use a uh, football shaped uh, medium grit diamond. And that's pretty much it. Those burrs are probably make up 95% of, of the whole preparation. So fisherotomy burrs start with, after that, all uh, comet burrs and you're ready to go. If you saw, we took a couple pictures using the Softlex disc. And what this disc is great for is both smoothing contours. It's also great for cleaning up composite at the end after you restore. Uh, but a very important function of this disc is for grooming the adjacent contacts. So let's say that I inadvertently nick the adjacent tooth, okay? Certainly can happen. So that disc can recontour that adjacent tooth. I like the disc facing in towards the, towards the head of the handpiece, okay? It's easier to work that way to kind of groom an adjacent contact. And it starts out coarse, but real quickly it'll become medium and it'll make a nice finish that won't catch floss or anything like that after you restore. And a lot of times you'll see the adjacent contact does not have a good shape. It's got a shape that's inappropriate, it's been restored, it's got an overhang into it, or it's, or it's crowding into your prep. If you look down on your prep and you see it crowding into your prep, that's gonna do strange things to your matrices and the matrices is not gonna hold its nice anatomic shape. So grooming the adjacent contact is a big part of doing uh, composite dentistry and even crown and bridge. Next time you prep a crown, make your tapered prep now look at your adjacent contacts and sometimes what you'll see is your adjacent contact is into your prep or over bulging into the covering up the margin and the technician cannot get a straight line of draw on a crown when that happens groom that adjacent contact back shape it the way you want it get rid of some of that undercut so your temporaries don't lock in and that'll really help your dentistry out Okay, so at this point we've got a super minimum prep. And if I've already got all the carries out, I'm basically, I'm almost done. That's how fast and easy it is. So just a little bit of sweeping back and forth with that fissurotomy burr, and that little piece of enamel will just flake off between you and the adjacent tooth. Now, the, what has to happen though, is if you haven't really broke contact with the adjacent tooth, you're not gonna be able to get your matrices in there. So you can take this wedge out and try the matrices in, okay? And here we have the most, uh, my typical matrices we'll use on a class two is a 5.5 five HD is the one that's my favorite. I'll slide that in there. Now in this model, it happened to slide in super easy and it fits perfect, but okay, in real life, what's gonna happen is it's typically not gonna to wanna to drop because you haven't opened the contact up enough. And that's where you can either do a little bit with the burr or you can grab one of these uh, true contact sanders. You can drop in there and just sand the contact, a little, the, the area towards the prep, towards your tooth that you're working on. So it's a one-sided sandpaper. You're gonna put it against your tooth that you're prepping and slide back and forth, which is a great idea anyway, because what you're doing is you're re removing biofilm that's down between below the prep. Because remember with BioClear system, your, your infinity edge margin is gonna be past the point where you prepped. It's gonna be on uncut tooth, and you need to clean that, and this will just be another way besides the BioBlaster to clean that area a little bit sub G or a little bit below where your caries was at.
So, um, one of the things that happens in real life that doesn't happen on this deniform, when you pre-wedge, when you pull this wedge out, okay, depending on whether you've rub rubber dam or other isolation methods, you're gonna see some bleeding come up when you withdraw this, uh, the, the wedge, okay? Uh, don't worry about it. You can use some hemostatic agent in there um, and st slow it down. And by the time you get your matrices, get re-wedged and ready to restore, you'll get a nice seal on the tooth that you're working on and the, whatever blood there is will be on the other side of the matrices. And it's a good test. If you rinse out your matrices and you look down on there and you don't see any percolation coming through, you know you're nice and isolated and it's not gonna matter if there's blood on the other side of the matrices. If you're using rubber dam technique, you won't get near as much of that because the rubber dam will have sort of compressed the papilla and shielded the papilla from the wedge. But if you're using isodry uh, or another technique, then you're gonna probably see some blood percolate when you pull the wedge out. And, but that's fine, that's part of doing it. So I hope you enjoyed these videos on the Clark Class II minimally invasive Class II preparation. For help restoring this, I'm gonna provide a link at the end of this video that's gonna to go to Dr. David Clark and he is gonna restore the Class II preparations. Thank you.